horse for the speed of light, a cloud of dust to the hearty Hayo Silver, the Lone Ranger. pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice than the masked rider of the plains. In the early days of the western United States, he fought criminals through the length and breadth of seven states. No one could match his courage, his strength, or his resourcefulness. And it was he, more than any other man, who made possible the winning of the West. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver, the Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! We're heading for Argus Falls! I am Silver! Away! A small group of mourners huddled beside an open grave in the cemetery beyond Argus Falls listened to the solemn voice of the minister as he read the burial service. Who's coming in glorious majesty to judge the world? The earth and the sea shall give up their dead. And the corruptible bodies of those who sleep in him shall be changed. And made like unto his own glorious body. According to the mighty workings whereby he is able to subdue all things to himself. Matt. Oh, Matt. Mother, don't. You shouldn't have died, Helen. He shouldn't ever have died. Mother, please. I had to think it was for the best. Don't cry, Ma. Please don't cry. Then. Yeah? I, I want you to remember something. I want you to remember it always. Huh? Bob did this. Don't ever forget that. Don't ever forget. Or, or forgive. All during the service, a young man had watched from the concealment of a clump of willows. When the service was finished and only the minister and the family remained behind, he approached slowly, almost fearfully. Ma, wait. Bob. Ma, I've got to talk to you. How dare you come here? How dare you? Look, sis, I know you hate me, Go but away. I, I won't. Ma, listen to me. You've got to listen. I know I've been wild and I've done all kinds of things to hurt you that I shouldn't. But I swear as I'm standing here that I'm not to blame for what's happened. As I hope to live, I swear I'm not. I don't. A... But, Ma... I can't talk about it, Bob. I just can't. Ma... Go with Mother, Dan. But, sis, I... I said, go with Mother. All right. Bob. Listen, Helen. No. You'll listen. We don't want to hear anything you have to say. We're tired, sick and tired of your lies and your excuses. You're rotten all the way through. Your broken mother's heart... All that your father was, was the worry you caused him. And, and now, now because he spent every dollar he could save to buy your way out of the scrape she got in, we've nothing left. 
Nothing, thanks to you. But the rain. It's gone. It, it couldn't be. It is. But, Helena, I tell you, except for that one shooting scrape two years ago, I ain't cost Pa one penny. That's a lie. It isn't. I don't know where you got this crazy idea, but Please, I... Please, I'd rather not hear anymore. I stayed only to tell you to keep away from Mother. If you hurt her again as you have in the past, I... I promise I'll finish her. So... so that's the way it is? Yes. I guess you'd like it if I was to clear out and go back to Arizona. I don't suppose you got a spark of decency left, but if you had, yes, that's what I'd ask. I thought so. Bob, will you? Will you go? Will you promise me you'll never... I'll promise nothing. No. No, I didn't think you would. But if you're afraid I'll pester you or Ma anymore, you needn't think that neither. I won't. I don't have to be told twice when I'm not wanted. Then... Then there's nothing more for me to say. Mother's waiting. I'll have to leave. Bob, I'm depending on you to keep your word. Just stay away. I'm coming, Mother. Oh. Parson. Yes, Bob? You heard what Helen said? I'm afraid I did. Parson, what have folks been saying about me since I've been gone? Well, I... Go on, I want to hear it. Well, Bob, I'm afraid they've said nothing very complimentary. Arizona isn't too distant, you know. Gossip gets back. You've been running with a pretty wild bunch, haven't you, son? Maybe. Was that true what Helen said, that Pa died broke? Yes. On account of me, because he was supposed to have been paying my bills? Yes. Where's Ma living? Why, I understand she and Helen and Danny have moved into the Clayton cottage. Your sister and Clayton plan to get married. Helen's going to marry that poor cat? Now, son... Uh, excuse it, Parson. I shouldn't have said that, but I did, so we let it stand. Look here, would you believe me if I told you something? Of course. What I told Helen is so. Two years ago, Pa dug up $500 to get me out of some trouble. Afterwards, I left for Arizona. I reckon that much you know. But from that day till this, I never cost Pa a dollar. Not one single dollar. That's strange. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I guess I'd better stay around here. What will you do? Sorry, Parson, but that's my business. I wasn't prying, Bob. I meant, what will you do for a living? Have you any cash? Not any. Then I... Oh, don't let that fret you. I can earn some, I reckon. There's plenty of outfits around Argus Falls. Can use a good top hand, I guess. Well, Parson, thanks for all you told me. We'll be meeting again, most likely. Adios. Hey, Bob, wait. Huh? Would you do me a favor? Favor? For sure, anything. After you've looked for work... Yeah? Come to see me. I'll be waiting. Young Bob Willis looked for a job in the vicinity of Argus Falls. Well, young fella, real tall pans ain't so common. I couldn't always use another, I reckon. Sure, I got work for you. What you say your name was? Bob Willis. Huh? Matt's boy? Yeah. Get off my place. Get off? But listen, you said you need... Whatever I said don't apply to a skunk like you. Mister, I wouldn't have you on my place if you was the best cowpoke in Texas. But I'll work for anything. I'll work just for my grub if you have to. Just no. To... But I've been hunting a job for over a week, and now i got to get work. Hungry? Flat busted. I ain't had a decent meal in three days. Well, that's too bad. But me, I hope you star. So you want to know why I can't use you, huh? Well, your pa was a friend of mine. Because of you, he lost everything. Your ma's my friend. And you acted towards her in a way to shame a coyote. I tell you, Mr. Mason... Don't try to tell me anything, young fella. Don't try that. There's your horse and there's the trail. Just hit leather. After two weeks. Come in, Bob. Well, see, I kept my promise, Parson. Here I am. I expected you earlier. Look here. When you told me to look you up, did you... Well, did you know I wouldn't be able to find any work? I did. Then why didn't you warn me? I don't think you would have taken my word for it, Bob. 
No. No, maybe I wouldn't. It's been unpleasant, hasn't it? You don't hear me kicking, do you? Or what do you want to see me for? I've been thinking over what you told me that day. I don't get you. About your father having sent you no money. Oh, that. Bob, since then I have made some inquiries. I think what I've learned will interest you. Yeah? Your father's account books show that in the last two years he withdrew large sums of money from his estate on 16 separate occasions. Now, towards the last, he borrowed those sums, his property being his security. Where'd that cash go? According to the records, to you. It didn't. Well, there's another thing. The money he borrowed came from Clayton. The fact isn't generally known yet, but today Clayton owns your father's ranch. Say, do you think... I'm not drawing any conclusions, Bob. I'm only repeating such facts as I was able to gather. I thought you'd like to know them. And you don't know how glad I am to have them. Parson, I'm going out to Clayton's place and grab that fat skunk by the throat, and if he don't tell me what he did... No. But I've got to. You'll do nothing of the kind. In the first place, that's not the way to get at the truth. And in the second place, there's certainly nothing criminal in the fact that Clayton loaned your father money. He knows something about this. Maybe. Then why shouldn't I... But just the same, you'll not call on him. I'm just to do nothing. Did I say that, Bob? Well, then? You're young, hot-headed. This sort of thing is outside of my province. I wouldn't trust either one of us to handle the situation as it should be handled. If I don't, who will? Two men who are camped in the valley. Huh? I've written them a note. This is it. Take it. Hey, I don't savvy this. Do I know these fellas? They're, they're friends of yours? Yes, they are friends of mine, Bob. But more, too. They're friends of everyone who wants justice. Lawman? No. One's an Indian. Huh? And the other's the Lone Ranger. <laughs> A small white cottage stood alone on a back street in Argus Falls. Owned by Clayton, a well-to-do rancher, it was occupied at present by Bob's mother, his sister Helen, and his young brother Danny. That evening, the rancher, red-faced and stout, although in his early thirties, called on the Willis family. The conversation turned to his approaching marriage with Helen and... Don't you agree with me, ma'am? Don't you agree a short engagement would be the wisest? I shall leave that to my daughter, Mr. Clayton. You wouldn't object, though, would you? No, not if Helen preferred to marry earlier. I wouldn't feel I had the right to interfere. There, Helen, you see. You, you really don't want to wait until fall? Why, what's the sense in it? <laughs> I've got a mighty fine place out on the ranch, you know. Mighty fine. You like it there. I hope you and the boy will, too, ma'am. Thank you. You're very kind. Shucks, that's all right. I got plenty. I wouldn't want it said I was stingy. <laughs> You'll be as welcome as rain in August. Now, how's for having the wedding in about uh, two weeks? If you wish it. Fine. We'll consider it settled. I'll arrange things with the parson. Well, it ain't so far from my bedtime. Uh, I'd better be getting along. I'll go to the door with you. Uh, when will we see you again, Mr. Clayton? Here now. Ain't that kind of... Formal for engaged folks. <laughs> Can't you never learn to say just Clayt like the others? I'm sorry. Clayt, I'll try to remember. <laughs> That's a good girl. <laughs> well, good night, all. Good night, Mr. Good night, sir. Good night, honey. Good night. Helen. Yes, Mother. Look at me. Yes. Now tell me the truth. The truth, Helen. Are you marrying Clayton because you want to, or, or what, Mother? Or because you think you must to give Danny and me a home? I don't like him, Ma. I hope she don't marry him. Why can't Bob come back home and all of us... Hush, but... Please, Danny. Well, Helen, I... Why, why, of course I want to marry Mr. Clayton. Whatever made you think I didn't. I didn't call your father Mr. Willis when we were caught in heaven. I called him Matt. Helen, if you have any doubts, break this engagement now. I'd rather go homeless the rest of my life than see you unhappy a single day. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger drama. 
Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Now to continue our story. Early the following morning in Argus Falls, a passerby glanced idly at the bank, looked quickly a second time, then raised his voice in a shout and took off at top speed for the office of the sheriff. The bank! The bank's been robbed! Hey, sheriff! The door of the bank busted in! Sheriff! The bank! The robber! Sheriff! When he reached the bank, the sheriff found an excited crowd gathered. He elbowed his way inside and discovered Banker Haynes staring about him with an air of bewilderment. Let me through. Stand aside. What was stolen, Mr. Haynes? How much to get? I I can't understand it. I huh? can't understand what? The safe. Evidently, I forgot to lock it last night. They cleaned it out? That's just it. They didn't. Huh? I haven't had much time to look around, but as far as I can see, not a thing's been stolen. You mean they busted in here when your safe wasn't locked and beat it away without taking a penny? It certainly appears that they did. Well, I'll be switched. Not a thing's been touched except... Except what? Our books. Our account books. Several were taken from the safe and left on the desk. They're still there. You can see them. And that's all, huh? Yes, Unless I discover something later. Well, Mr. Haynes, all I can say is this. Either the hombres busted in here was blind, or they was after something other than cash and couldn't find it. If the sheriff had been able to overhear the conversation at the Lone Ranger's camp, he would have revised his opinion... You mean to say you busted into the bank hall by yourself? Yes, and there heap danger. Oh my gosh, yes. Why didn't you tell us what you had in mind? We could have gone along. As a matter of fact, it hadn't occurred to me when I left here last night. And what made you do it and why? I got to thinking about those payments your father made. And about the fact that when he borrowed money, he didn't borrow it from the bank, but from Clayton. Yeah? I decided we could use some more facts. And I found them. What do you mean? I went through the bank's records. I looked up the record of your father's old account. And then what? And then I compared it with Clayton's. You figured too fast for me, friend. I, I don't see what you was after. Bob, you told me your father withdrew large amounts of money on 16 occasions in the past two years. Wasn't that so? Your information was correct. Then what was... Now listen your... to this. Every time your father made a withdrawal, Clayton made a deposit within a day or two. The amount of each deposit corresponded almost exactly to the amount your father had taken out. Then... Then he was paying that cash to Clayton. Yes. But why? What for? That's the next thing to be learned. Call Scout, Tunnel. Here, Scout. Here, Silver. You leaving again? Yes. Well, now, wait. Wait till I saddle up. I'll you right... stay here. You won't be needed. But I want to... President, it'd be better if you remained in the background. What has to be done now, Toto and I can do. But are you going to do all the work? Ain't I got no right to help myself? Bob, when the time comes, you'll have as much as you can handle. Ready, Tunnel? Huh? Then come be on. Be ready. Come on, old fellow. Get him up, Scout. Hurry, old boy. Hurry. The masked man and Tonto brought their great stallions to a halt a short distance from Clayton's ranch house. What do now? Tonto, Bob's father didn't give Clayton all that money without a reason. Not right. And he had a reason for concealing the fact that he was paying Clayton. It could have been blackmail in some form or another. Nothing less would have induced Matt to strip himself and his family of everything they owned. Ah. But blackmail can't exist without evidence to back up the blackmailer's charge. Clayton must have held something over Matt's head that he could make public in case Matt refused his demands. Not right. There's Clayton's place ahead of us. That evidence is still in existence. There's where it's kept. Mm. And it's up to us to find it. Head for that grove, Kimasabe. It'll give us cover for the horses. Get him up, Skull. Come on, Silver. <laughs> An hour had passed when Clayton and a neighbor rode up to the house, dismounted and tethered their mounts to the hitch rail in front. They climbed the steps and crossed the porch, unaware that anything was wrong. Clayton put his hand to the knob of the door, pushed it open, and then... Get in here. What, Mask? Quiet. What in the world? sound from either one of you and you'll regret it. Inside. Crook, now I'll no, get in. close the door. We're leaving. Tonto. Uh-huh. Go ahead. I'll follow. Uh-huh. You will. 
Don't call your men and don't attempt to leave this house within the next five minutes. That's for your own safety. Remember. My desk. Frank, what's the matter? Wait. Don't tell me you keep cash losing your desk. No. And what's the trouble? Uh, there they are. Huh? They didn't find them. Find what? Huh? Oh, oh, nothing special. Just some papers. Uh, come on. I guess they've cleared out by now. <laughs> The masked man and Toto, racing across country, stopped at their camp, but did not dismount. Steady, Silver, steady. Bob. Yeah? Toto and I are riding on. We've no time to lose. We'll be gone at least ten days, perhaps two weeks. Gone where? Never mind that now. There's just one thing you need to know. When we return, your troubles will be finished. You mean that you... We fu- found the explanation to all that's happened. We're going for a man who can put Clayton behind bars. Who? You'll remember him when you meet. Bob, this morning you complained you had too little to do. So far, I ain't done a thing. And here's something you can do. What's that? We'll make all speed possible. But if we're not back before your sister's wedding, delay it. Huh? No matter what measures you will have to take, don't permit your sister to marry Clayton. Friend, it's a promise. Good. Let's go, Tonto. Get him up, Scout. Come on, Silver. Come on. absence of the Lone Ranger, Bob Willis anxiously marked the passage of time. A week slipped by, ten days, and neither the masked man nor Tonto had returned. Then one day a small group of friends gathered in the cottage for the wedding of Bob's sister. Clayton, scrubbed and polished for the occasion, was loud, self-confident, and clearly pleased with himself. But Helen Willis, seated in a room just off the parlor, could not hide the telltale marks of recent tears. Yes. Yes, Danny. You've been crying. Have I? <laughs> well, Danny, when, when you're a little older, you'll realize that's what Roger expected to do at their wedding. That ain't why you've been crying. Isn't it? You know it ain't. I, well, I, well, I don't know anything of the kind. Danny, look here. What's got into you? Uh, you don't like that fat old glute any more than I do. Danny. Well, you don't. Stop it. Oh, it... oh this isn't like you, Danny. Mr. Clayton's been very good to us. He's let us live here without paying, and, and now he's going to give us all a fine home. And you're going to like it on the ranch. You shouldn't act so ungrateful. Well, she will. And besides, he's not old. He's 33. Oh, Danny, when you're 33, I hope you remember you said that. Well, just the same. I bet if Bob was here, he wouldn't let you That's go. Enough. But we won't talk about it anymore. Not... <laughs> We're waiting for you, Helen. Yes, Mother. Now, come along, Danny, and behave yourself. Yes, I'm... How do you feel? I'm all right. Helen, do you still feel oh, sure? Mother, that... you're as bad as Danny. The cl- I don't know where the two of you get such notions. I should know them own mine, shouldn't I? N- now, forget about it and come along. <laughs> I wish I could feel sure. There's a person, Brian. Honey, the minister's ready and waiting, and it's almost three, so... Howdy, folks. Bob! Mind if I come in? Gosh, what's the matter? You not welcome? <laughs> From the looks of you, you think I was poisoned or something. No, look here, Bob. Oh, hello, Clayton. So you figured to get hitched to my sister, huh? Well, my uh, place is yours. Bob, you are for what? Shut up! Don't nobody move. The first one does, Clayton's heat and lead. Now sit down. I reckon nobody hankers to do anything foolish. You, uh... I said sit down. Bob, are you out of your head? What do you think you're doing? Stopping a wedding. Bob, I think I understand this, even if the others don't. But you're being very foolish. Parson, I... just stop where you are. I... What I said to the others goes for you, too. I'm Bill and Clayton the second anybody tries to meddle. It'd all be better if you take it easy, folks. Maybe we'll be here for quite a spell. If it's too long, then maybe I'll have to take Clayton Vermouth's. But anyhow, nobody's leaving till I do. So make yourselves comfortable. Son, why are you doing this? Because I was told to. Told to? You're clean loco. How long do you think you can keep us here? Till a friend of mine shows up. And if you think I can... Good work, folks. Well, a mask, man. You can put away your gun. I'll take over. Thank heavens you got here. Quiet. Bob, stop this wedding on my orders. You'll soon learn why. Clayton, on the way here, I rode by your place and picked up these. You recognize them? Blast you, Kimmy, though. I'll keep them. Hey, you're the hombre I met before. Right. 
The day you saw me, I found these papers in your desk. I left them where they were to convince you they hadn't been discovered. Do you care to tell the people here what's in them? Oh, I... Never mind, I'll tell them. I believe all of you know that two years ago, Barb left Argus Falls because of a shooting scrape. These papers are affidavits. A sworn statement saying the man Bob wounded made his way to Clayton's place and there died of those wounds. He didn't die. I never killed him. Stephen, worse than I thought, you're a murderer. No, I... The last man's forced the issue. I tried to keep the truth from you and your ma, Helen, but now I guess nothing can be done. What the masked man says is right. Bob's a killer. But I didn't say that. Huh? That man didn't die. These affidavits are false. They were sworn to by men in your employ. You're lying. Jessup died. He, he was died. paid by you to disappear. You're crazy. I'll prove it. When I found these affidavits, I found a letter written to you and signed by Jessup, dated after the time of his supposed death. No. His address was in that letter. I and I address. brought him with me. Tonto. Uh, here, here, fella. Jessup. Jessup's already seen the sheriff, Clayton. And he's been promised leniency in exchange for the truth. You dirty double-crosser. Clayton, how could I help it? The masked man made me come here. But how... Why Mrs. Did... Willis, Clayton blackmailed your husband. He convinced Matt that he could send Bob to the gallows. Your husband paid for Clayton's silence. Paid everything he possessed. Because he realized that wild as Bob had been, the disgrace would have killed you if Bob had been arrested and hanged. Matt never paid me one penny. Matt left records stating that the money was for Bob. It was to save Bob's life, but it went to you. Prove it. The sheriff's getting the proof at this moment. He's comparing your bank account with Matt's, as I did two weeks ago. Then then it was you who broke into the bank. Yes. Watch out for Clayton. He's going to make a break. Oh, look out there. Here, I got him. Hold us count for the sheriff. I'll turn him over to the law myself. Sure thing, Bob. <laughs> Still mad at me, sis. I, I want to apologize if you let me. Oh, shucks, forget it. We're all together again, Helen. You and me and Ma and Danny. So let's not think of what's past. I'm so glad, Bob. Me too. Well, I've been wild and I'm admitting it. But we'll get the ranch back now and I'm straightening up. Bob, that's wonderful. We're so grateful. Grateful? <laughs> well, listen, don't thank me. Thank the mask man. <laughs> The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.